It is a privilege to be here with you today. If you're viewing from online, welcome, or at the Peru campus. My name is Brian, as Sherry had said, and I am one of the, campus, uh, one of the pastors here at Ottawa. Raise your hand if you are familiar with the Jay Leno show, the Tonight Show that was on years ago. A couple of you, okay. Well, I remember watching that show, and they did one of these skits called Jaywalking, where he would walk around on the streets, and he would ask random people random questions about current events, a political event, a political or geographic, but he would walk up to random people and ask these questions. So I'm just going to read off some of the things that he would whip up, and the responses would be pretty funny. Like, what divides East and West Germany? And the response was, the sea. That's not what divides East and West Germany. Or here's a religious question, a religion question. Who was Jesus' parents? It was Joseph and Mary, and the answer was Joseph and Mary. Ding, 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 ding. And then they followed up with this question. When did Jesus live on this earth? And they responded, 250 million years ago. That's not how long ago Jesus lived on this earth. But the reason why I started with that was I was curious if we would do that around here. We would do some jaywalking around our campuses, and we would walk up to you and ask you how you were doing. I wouldn't want to stump you or anything like that, but I would want to know how you are doing spiritually. How are you growing your relationship with Jesus? Are you seeking after Jesus? Our mission statement, as Sherry said, is to lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. That's why we exist. If you go to our Ottawa campus, you can go down in our children's area, and it's on the wall. It says, leading people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. If you go to our Peru campus, you can see it right when you walk in the door. Leading people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. It's why we exist. We're always pointing people to take next steps and we're actively engaging in the mission. I believe when you good thing, I believe when you seek Jesus, good things happen. We are in the book of Acts. We've been carrying through it for the last couple weeks, and I'm going to be in chapter 17 today. And so it starts out in one of the places. It says, Paul is walking around the city of Athens, and he notices all of the idols that are around, and he's troubled by all of them. And he's standing before the high council of very religious people, and he starts by telling them who his God is. He says, my God made the world and everything in it, and he gives life and he gives breath. And he satisfies our every need. And then Paul says this in chapter 17, verse 27. He says, his purpose for the nations is to seek after God and perhaps feel their way towards him and find him, though he is not far away from any of us. Let's pray. Father, I do thank you for this time to share your word. I pray today that we would hear from you, that we wouldn't just come and sit, Lord, that we would seek you and we would feel your presence, that we'd pursue you, that we would leave changed people. So Lord, help me to communicate the message well today. And Lord, may we have the ears to hear you and the eyes to see you. No matter where we are in our relationship with you, I ask this in your name, amen. So, I wanna ask us an honest question. How are you doing spiritually? Where are you at in your relationship with Jesus? My guess is that there's numerous people that, are, that have come in that are really excited about their relationship with Jesus. They're on fire. They're just taking step. They're serving. I know some of you, and I want to applaud you. Maybe there's some of you that are online that have just caught this service, and you've ne- you don't really know much about Jesus or the Old Testament or the New Testament. And that's okay. I was once there as well. But my guess is that there's some of us here that are really struggling in your relationship with Jesus. You've slid back. Something has happened in your journey. I've been there as well. But God has a desire for us, no matter where we are in our relationship, is that we would seek after him, that we would look for him. In Psalms 105, it says, search for the Lord and for his strength and continually seek him. I added this, though he is not far away from any of us. Haven't we all lost something in our lives, something personal, maybe a keepsake, something that we really cherished? We've all probably lost our car keys, haven't we? Did we stop looking, did we stop looking for our car keys? We we didn't probably, we kept on looking. It was years ago that I was out playing with my dog in the backyard and uh, 
it was, uh, we were just throwing the ball around, trying to get it from him. He doesn't catch very well. He just keeps everything to himself. So we, we have a big yard where we lived then. It was, a, it, it was over an acre big. And so we covered a lot of ground in the short amount of time that we were playing out there. But at one point, I looked down, and I noticed my ring was not on my finger anymore. It fell off. I couldn't find it. So to do that, to search for it well, I had to take my dog inside. I gave him to Janae, my wife. And she looked at me weird, and I didn't want to tell her what I was going back outside to go look for. So I frantically looked around this big acre for this little bitty ring. And I was frantically looking, looking everywhere. I got lucky, I think, that day. And I found it. And I ran inside. I was excited. And I, I was like, look what I found. She looked at me and was like, yeah, you I mean, I'm glad you better have found that thing. Because, <laughs> because we had just become married people. I was excited when I found that ring. Finding it was worth it, right? I think there are times in our relationship with Jesus we find ourselves lost. Searching and looking for him. Maybe you're not there now. There may come a time in your relationship where you find yourself a little distance from Jesus. The road might not always be as clear as it once was. Detours, road back, blocks, Life can happen. Unexpected circumstances may happen. But often in our journey, we must look to find our way back to Jesus. You know, my wedding ring meant a lot to me. And I was going to search all night long to find that. And I was not going to give up. Seeking and searching for Jesus is part of the process, part of the journey. Continually seeking Jesus no matter where you are. The beginning of 2020 was a hard time in my life, the hardest time in my entire life. I'd shared part of this story the last time I spoke. Me and Janae, we've been trying to be, be parents for a long time, and we had a miscarriage. It was difficult for me. And then about a month later, in February, we closed the Morris campus. Combine those two together, I was lost. I was struggling. I wanted to quit. I was angry. I didn't know why I was dealing with all this pain and this this, this feelings that I had inside of me. I wanted to be done. Matter of fact, I was done. I came up with a plan. We can always divide, we can always come up with plans in our heads, can't we? So I had to share this plan with my wife. It was the day that she came home from work. We sat down for dinner and I told her my plan. I, could, I said I couldn't do this anymore. I, I, I just wanted to come in and sit down. I couldn't do this ministry. I just, I just couldn't fulfill what God was asking me to do. And I was just overwhelmed in the moments that I was in. But she wasn't going to let me quit. She wasn't going to let me quit. Matter of fact, what she told me, I can't share everything that she told me. But one thing did, she did tell me was, you know that district superintendent that you just spoke to a couple weeks ago? You know that one that you told him that you had a calling in your life, that you wanted to share Jesus and with everybody and whoever that was just made up? And I said, no, that's what I want to do. That's what I feel called to do. And she's like, all right. So I had to pull up my bootstraps. I had to figure it out. I had to figure it out. She wasn't going to allow me to quit. I had to find what was lost. And that was the, my passion for Jesus. A couple weeks later, Pastor Harold, he had messaged me. And he'd asked me if I'd be interested in sharing a message to the seventh and eighth graders. He didn't know what was going on in my life. He had no idea that I was broken and that I was lost and that I didn't know where to go. But his message, or his, him reaching out to me was so encouraging. You have no idea. Fast forward a couple more weeks from there, I took an online class for my, my license to be a minister. It was a spiritual formation class. It changed everything for me. I actually apply some of those things I learned in that class to this day. Changed everything. Fast forward a couple months later, we became pregnant. We had a baby not too long, about a year ago. <laughs> but all through those things, God kept on showing up. He kept on showing up. All I had to do was get up off my butt and look to Jesus. Maybe this road has been hard for you and that passion that you have right now 
isn't what it used to be. Jesus feels far away. You know, often in our walk, our journey, specific reasons we can point to, places, events, relationships, COVID, we can all point to those things that can cause division in our relationship with Jesus. But my guess is that God did not line up a miscarriage in a closing of a campus to divide me and him. There's no way that he would do that for someone that he says he loves. He doesn't do the other stuff either. But the truth is, we choose to allow those things to divide us. So it's up to us to break through those seasons, those difficult places. And we have to hold ourselves to some accountability. I hate to be the one to break the news, but we have to hold ourselves accountable for some of those areas where it's difficult. But when we allow stuff and things to get in the way, life happens, right? It robs us from what God wants to do in us and through us. Search for the Lord and for his strength and continually seek him, Psalms 105. See, God just wants us to look to him. He just wants our attention and he wants us to find our way back to him. So look to Jesus for strength in those moments that may feel lost and don't give up looking. Don't give up looking. So what are the ways that we can seek Jesus? I thought I'd share some tangible ways that I believe someone was asking me like, what's your message about? I said, I feel like it's just a reminder. Some of these things are reminders that I'm gonna share with you, but I feel like these are things These are staple kind of things that are very easy to follow if we would just give them our attention. So it starts with giving God your attention. Be intentional with creating space for specifically for Jesus, setting time aside for him, leading yourself into a growing relationship with Jesus, giving yourself, giving him the posture. I think when, I think one of the ways that we can seek Jesus is right here, right now in worship, right? We worship. I know that when I'm here, I'm closer to Jesus. When I'm here, I'm looking for Jesus through the people, through the music, through the word, through the message, whatever it may be, I'm looking for Jesus. I shared that we should continually seek Jesus, right? Jesus seeks our attention more than one day a week. So the Bible is a way that we can engage and we can seek Jesus. I don't think, I mean, he would love more time than five minutes, But I think that if we engaged in the Bible five minutes or 20 minutes, morning, night, be intentional, allow that shaping to take place through his word. I think the the apps or the acts devotional that we've been sharing with everybody, it's a practical way that we can all engage with the message. Read a chapter a day in our, our staff and our board members wrote a devotion to go along with it. You can get one on your way out. Left my phone down there, but you can get it on your phone. It's very easy. One chapter a day, we can seek Jesus and we can grow in our relationship with him. We can seek Jesus through groups, right? I'm a huge advocate for groups. I've led a handful of groups, and there's two things that I want people to do in, in when I have a, a group of people in front of me. I tell them there's two things that I would like, that we would grow in relationship with each other, that we would share life, that we'd begin to develop friendships, we would pray for each other, we would share life with each other. And the other thing is that we would grow in our relationship with Jesus. Two things. Through groups, you're choosing to intentionally be with other people. Where two or three people gather, Jesus says, I'm going to be present. Over the years, I've seen more people grow through groups than most other places. And then the other place that I feel like we can seek Jesus is through prayer. We can pray anywhere, can't we? There's a... Uh, a Bible app out there, if you guys are familiar with. If you don't have the Bible app, it's simple. It's the best app that I've ever had in my life. It's such a practical way that Engage is in reading the Bible. One of the things that I've done over the, over the years is there's a prayer-guided spot that you can actually read through a prayer, and no matter where you are in your season, it guides you through this prayer. And you can go quick, you can go slow, It's a moment of intentionally taking time to Jesus, to be with Jesus. Over the years, prayer has shaped me, and I've consistently seek Jesus 
through prayer more than any place in difficult seasons than at any other place. Prayer. I want to share a story of waiting through seeking through prayer. As a young Christian, as I said earlier, we're at all different places. I can remember when I, uh, when I found Jesus, uh, I had found myself in a healthy place for the first time in my life. And I knew one of the next steps that I wanted was I wanted to find a wife that I could grow and have a family with. So I began to pray this prayer. I said, Lord, I just pray that you would bless me with someone that one day that I can call my wife that would love you and that we could love each other and that we can grow in a relationship. Pretty simple, right? Well, I prayed that prayer over and over and over and over For over a year, I prayed that prayer. I consistently seeked Jesus. I think sometimes we have this Amazon attitude. Option for delivery could be tomorrow, right? Or option for delivery could be in three days with with less boxes. Nine times out of ten, we're going to pick that one day no matter what, right? We're going to pick that one day no matter what. But through seeking and patience, God has perfect timing. And sometimes waiting has its purpose. Seeking has its purpose. This might be a hard time. It's a hard thing to think about. But sometimes we need to know that he's nearby. I just feel like I do. I want to know that I'm not doing this all by myself. So all this seeking, all this praying, all this worshiping, I want to know that I want to see a sign. I want to know that he's with me, right? That I'm not doing this by myself. So as I was, uh, one of the days that I was going to prepare to write this message, I uh, I had it on my calendar. It was about 6.30 in the morning. Uh, I was sitting at home having a coffee. And uh, and, uh, and my wife and I, we got a text from our babysitter. And she said that her house is going to be closed today because her daughter is sick. And so my schedule is flexible. And so I obviously, I'm, I'm going to stay home with my daughter, and that's fine. I love spending time with her. And so she, we put her down for a nap uh, at 9 o'clock every day. And so before, if, we're, if she's at home, I'm going to read her a story. And so one day that, uh, the day that I was stayed home, I, re- I started read, I read her this book, Oh, the Places You Will Go. I'm sure we're all familiar with this book. And it says, out there things can happen, and frequently they do, to people as brainy and as footsie as you. And when things start to happen, don't worry, don't stew. Just go right along. They'll start happening too. Oh, the places you'll go. So you can go on Amazon. You can buy this book. I didn't buy this book. Matter of fact, I've never read it to my daughter. See, this book was a a gift. It was uh, from Patty and Carl Heron, who are here today. And so they wrote in it. And uh, it was, I'd read it before, but that day that I grabbed it, I was supposed to be writing somewhere else. I wasn't supposed to pick this book up, right? And so one of the things, it was encouragement. They were volunteers for me at the Morris campus. One of the things they wrote in there was, God has his hand on us constantly. And he guided you to Crossbridge to call home. We might not know the places that we go, but we serve a God that does. The other ironic thing is, is that it was dated exactly four years from the day that I opened it up the last week. That's the sign that reassured me that through all the seeking, all the praying, sometimes we don't hear an audible voice. That assured me that staying home was where I needed to be. God knew exactly what I needed to hear. He has a unique way of showing us sometimes, doesn't he? Not always in a voice, but enough to know that he is with me, to reassure me. We serve a God of coincidences, don't we? Thank you, Herons, for that. As we seek God and we begin to listen and hear what he has to say to us, I just want us to be open. Open your heart. Don't worry about being perfect. Don't worry about living up to someone else's expectations. Just sit with him. 
allow him to comfort you and just be with him. You don't have to be somebody else. Just get to know him. Just get to know the Lord. In Isaiah 55, it says, my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord. And my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. What if we would just allow God to be God in our lives? To be still and know that I am God. He's the creator of the heavens and earth, and he wants to know you. But we can't know him if we don't spend time with him and listen to him, allowing Jesus to be listened to in all areas of our lives, allowing his voice to be heard. Uh, making a step towards Jesus in our relationship is the first thing we do. We engage with him. We say, I want to follow you. I want to be a Christian. That's the first step we make as a Christian. But I believe these steps afterwards are equally important. That's why we talk about next steps all the time, right? We're, we want you to take a next step. We want you to grow. We want you to seek Jesus. We want you to find next steps to help you, encourage you. Like all relationships, this one is equally important as all the other ones. You know, and it takes a big effort. If I never listened to my wife, things would not go well. If you never listen to your boss or anything like that, things would not go well. You need to have a communication with the people that are around us, and I believe that we need to have a conversation with Jesus. A little fun fact for you, I have to practice being a good listener. <laughs> I have to really practice, but I really take it serious. I really take it serious, and when I'm listening well to Jesus, this right here, is really, really good. I pay attention to him. Something awesome begins to take shape. When we listen, when we look, and we come to Jesus more and more, your journey, our lives begin to look a little bit different. You know, our character from the inside begins to change. The inside out begins to change. This happens when our thoughts begin to look like, more like the thoughts of Jesus. You know, our circumstances may not change, your job might stink still. The income just isn't what it used to be. Your health, whatever it may be, those might not change. But your character can change. What's working on inside, that can change through listening and allowing Jesus to work through you. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, it says, Seek the kingdom above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. Jesus is saying this, seek the kingdom. What he's saying is, seek me, and I'll be the provider of your every need. You know, I, I, my guess is that each one of us is seeking something in life, whether if it's happiness, it's joy, it's love, it's friendships, it's health, it's community. Jesus says, bring those needs before me. Allow me to be the one that you seek and the one that you pursue. Church, I don't want us to let what we seek in life to be more important than Jesus. That all the seeking and the worshiping and the praying in our growth with Jesus helps us to have confidence in a God that wants to be found and desired by you today. I'm reminded that each day is a new day for us. Each day, and I get to see that through my daughter's eyes. Uh, she's a blessing in so many ways. She's a blessing. Lately, she's, she's 14 months, and so she's been discovering new things each day. And so she knows where her belly button is. She knows where her parents' belly buttons are. <laughs> she's afraid of my feet for whatever reason. But she's discovering new things. She knows where her nose is, her tongue, her lips. She can make animal noises. While we were, um, while we were um, on vacation this last week, uh, we went to South Carolina. It was such a cool thing to just to see her grow. And um, she had a pacifier in her mouth she was sucking at. And she, we were talking, and she's definitely picking up on everything. And she pulled it out, and she goes, cookie. Sucked it back in. 
I was like, talk about a girl after her dad's own heart. <laughs> but what if we began to see life through a child's eyes? We might be able to see all that God offers us, right? That each day is a new day for us, no matter where you're at today. As Dr. Seuss says it, somehow you'll escape all that Waiting and staying, you'll find those bright places where boom bands are playing. With banner flip flipping, once more you'll ride high, ready for anything underneath the sky. Ready because you're that kind of guy. Each day we seek Jesus. We can see all that he wants for you. I'm afraid unless we seek Jesus, we may miss out. I want us to take advantage of each day, no matter where you are in your relationship, in your life. As my daughter has been able to discover something new each day, can't we seek Jesus and discover more of what he has to offer us to each day? Can't we? We can collectively do that. Father, I thank you for this moment to share what you've laid on my heart. And I just believe and I know and I trust that you are present here with this church and with these people, with this every single heart that's open to you right now, Lord, that you're speaking into their heart, their lives. And so we trust you, we believe you, that through the seeking that we can receive you and that we can literally be changed people, Lord. I trust that to you and I ask it in your name, amen.